Well, it's been a rough trip so far, Mike. It has been a little bit of a day. A lot of things have happened. Doug, talk about it. Yeah, I broke my machine, twisted the drive shaft right out of it. It's junk. Mike crashed his machine, basically, folded the A-arm up. Sucker's dead. Uh, only one solution to these problems. We now, now, we don't have enough machines yeah. to ride anymore. And, you know, fixing them, yeah, we could do that, but I think it's better to just buy a new machine. Yeah, we got ourselves a Maverick Car, boys. Yeah. 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 yeah! yeah! Man, I should have broke my machine. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, man. There she is. Shoot. This is so, I like, oh. I've seen so many of these around here, and I've been purposely not looking. Not looking, yeah. Oh, we've refused so many offers to drive these at this yeah, point. Yeah, really just want to do it ourselves. To wait until you drive one that is ours and we can just fully bash it. And that will be tomorrow, all yep. day Sunday. Yep. Maybe we'll just wow. unload it quick and then I gotta go get some other stuff figured out. I think that's fair. I yep. think that's fair. I'm excited. I forgot about that already. Look at that. Outside door handle. We're so used to inside ones. We got an outside one now. Yeah, yeah it's really nice. It's super nice. Well, this is exciting. This is the freshest she's ever going to be, boys. Cleanest it'll ever be right here. Oh, let's hear it. I can't wait. They ain't get any cleaner. Let's just check this out. Dang. <laughs> How many miles? 1.5. Dang it, that's it. Okay. Fresh. She Fresh. broke it. Wow. <coughs> yeah. Holy. Fresh. Let's see your mic. Woohoo. So different. Sounds weird. Also, we don't really know if we're gonna be able to fit this on our trailer. Yeah, well, that's a detail we'll sort out later. Yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, buddy. Yeah. That's sick. All right, Mike, get out. <laughs> All right, you got the drive. You're done. Yeah, a little enough. froggy front end. I don't know, but let's hear it, bud. Okay. Kind of sounds like a standard X3. Maybe yeah, a little different got sound. Got some Can-Am triple sounds going on. Yeah. For sure, there's something in there. There is so much for us to look over tomorrow on this thing. Yeah, the probably. crazy suspension setup. The camera on it is great for backing up. It's yeah, clean. backup camera. Forward and backwards. This oh, there crazy is a thing. Camera. Unreal. Ah, yep. How is it, bud? Hold on a minute. <laughs> it finally has the telescoping wheel, too. Look at that. So good. Heck yeah. Wow, actually, I feel a lot better in this than <laughs> my X3. Yeah, no doubt. The paddle. I think the seat's adjustable too, isn't it, up and down? Sick. It's supposed to be. Well, Doug, you started life with a yellow Can Am Maverick. I did. Maybe I'll finish life in one. Or not finish it, but you know, go back. To Continue it, it yeah. Right. Full Continue circle. It for sure. I do like it. This is nice. There's a lot of things I like. Well, we'll go over in depth tomorrow. But right now, we got our stuff to handle. Plus, you guys probably want to be able to see it. Wow, that's different. All right, Matt, see you tomorrow, bud. All right, see ya. Oh. We're off to a good Matt start. Matt has <laughs> broken our background. <laughs> Biscuit. Give her some guys, man. It's so new and it's so fresh. It's probably still just learning itself. It's just locked so, up yeah, she's already. Still gotta learn. Yeah, it literally has one mile on it. So basically, out of the trailer, fixed into the trailer, however you want to put it. Got it. It's gotta learn the atmosphere, you know. Yeah, true. So we're uh, out here at Miracles Oasis still. We're gonna do a little walk around and talk about all the things that we found on this thing. But it's gonna be at the end of the video. So if you yep. want to see that, wait around. Yep. But right now, action. Let's get to the action. Okay, here we go. First start, dude. Yeah. Let's hear this baby. We're ripping, okay. We got a lot of options here to figure out. Let's see what's the dash say. Performance key, sport mode. Let's just see what's going on here. Get the main screen up. Okay, engine mode. We probably want sport plus right off the bat, right? Yeah, that's gotta be the best setting to start with, right? Yeah, the anti-lag stuff, uh, let's see what the shocks are doing. We probably want Let's go Sport Plus there, too. Drive mode. Sport Plus. Dang. Three different options on all of them. Oh, yeah, there was. OK, OK. Steering. Yeah, max. Yep. 
up. Okay, I'll leave it there. Four by four trail active. We'll give that a shot, see how it works. Lock and unlock. Must be no the front kidding. differential. That's a separate setup, okay, well. Reverse, we got it. Oh, door's open, it's pissed, let's try. Wow, we're good. Wow, this feels weird. Good, but weird. Even that little bit unloaded on the trailer, the power steering seems super good. <laughs> it's nuts feeling it pop into gear. Oh, okay. There she is. Okay. Sport Plus is maybe a little aggressive for this, you know, just cruise, but. Might smooth out as she learns a little bit. All right, here we go. Go for a little rep. How's that, boys? Just so bizarre. It's so different than really? anything else I've ever driven whatsoever. Tell me about it, bud. The chassis definitely feels very stable. It feels like it takes big hits, will take big hits well. It's not extraordinarily over the top smooth and chatter and smaller bumps. That's kind of what we were hoping for with this it's, crazy suspension geometry. Yeah, like it's just okay. Um, in the little stuff, but it's fine. It's it's good. I wouldn't say mind-blowing, but it's it's a it's a beast of a car There's a lot of weight here and you can feel it's got power Okay, but it takes a minute to start doing stuff interesting it doesn't feel nimble I would bet with a proper set of tires and maybe a little more break-in time that would go away But off the bat the x3s did good in the dunes bone stock. Yeah, obviously, you know There's stuff we're gonna do to these machines, you know, like correct tire setups And you know, we're gonna pump the power up and do all that sort of stuff. It's gonna make it more fun to fun to drive But as is it's a It's a beast <laughs> Mike, what'd you think bud being an yeah. x3s man? Kind of like Doug said, small bump chatter. It's obviously a way bigger improvement than like what the X3 chassis were. But really where you start to notice is when you start really getting that real heavy momentum and up to like 50 heavy speeds, like the suspension really works and it really takes it. But I mean, it seemed pretty plush. You guys, you guys want to keep driving or you want to swap out? What do you guys want to do? No, one of you guys should rip yeah, this thing. One of you guys should. All right, let's do it. First time in the Maverick R. Oh, we got ourselves uh, a free item. Oh. From our friends in Mexico, dude. Hose clamp, eh? Wonder oh, what that's just, from. <laughs> I, I'm gonna max out the, the glove box with this one. <laughs> glove box capacity reached. Sounds so I different. hate that. That little cluster? Yeah, like, yeah. come on, guys. Alright, what do you want here? Sport Plus. Yeah, so I think the trail oh, locks good. up the front slower, the trail active locks up the two front tires quicker. So. Right, okay. And then you got your front dip lock. Okay, so. how do I go back into... Press brake. Oh, you have to really slam the brake down. Whoa, okay. that's weird. And the gas pedal is kind of just in nowheresville in there. Oh, that's the brake pedal. Yeah, the, oh, What sorry. the <laughs> heck? Okay, yeah. gas pedal's really far to the right. Okay, I didn't notice that. I'm 
coming low? There's a little hell there. Hold on. Let's try low. Now it's in high. Oh my god, I was in low gear that whole time. So weird. Oh, you hear that? Yeah. Anti lag. Was right. Doug in low gear the whole time? He must have been. Dude, this is weird. Right, man, what'd you think? Weird. There's no X3 in that thing, except for the rear bottom out resistance. That is all <laughs> X3 because yep. it doesn't have it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh man, all right. This is you guys are gonna like this. You and Mike were in low gear. Yeah. Last time. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. Wait, Interesting. Yeah, okay. Gear. Yeah, I'm not hundred percent sure how it works, but it appeared to like it was in low for some reason. Okay. And it appears to save it like every time you put it in drive. Yep. If you put it in low. You put it in drive, it'll still be in low after a restart. Oh, so, so maybe it I was... Hit, I hit low again, and a little H came up above the like gear position. Okay. Yeah, and the car felt infinitely different. Yeah, okay. Way more powerful. Because okay. we're driving around, we're like, man, it's going up all these hills in seventh gear. Like, it's just topped out. Okay, and then okay. There's no, there's high. like the smallest little size 10 font. And yeah. it's one of those ones, is the highlighted one the gear I'm in, or is the one that's right. bolded the one I'm in? Makes Turns sense. All I did was clicking in the drive. Very so strange. if it was probably in low, low. loading yeah. it on the trailer, it probably just defaulted well, back a low. Well, okay. yeah. we'll check the footage. Maybe, you know, you can see what gear position you guys were in when you were ripping. So I mean, it did seem to shift a lot for the very not amount of speed we had like what we we're 40 and i think it shifted like five times yeah, yeah it feels like between low and high high gear feels like 50 percent po uh, more power okay so, yeah, that's good top end it's is, good that's good top end's hard it's a weird car i don't like i'm not immediately blown away by anything um transmission's awesome i love that turbo sounds are awesome i love that it's gonna take a lot of getting used to like it doesn't strike me immediately as like a gigantic leap forward how do you feel yep. about it though? Yeah, it is almost like they packed a lot of tech into it just to pack tech into it. You know what I mean? Okay. Tech for the sake of tech. Yeah, that happens. And sometimes that, that happens. can bite you because an X3 is just simple, easy, lightweight. They just go. Right. Now this, we'll see. The opposite. We'll see how it holds up, but there's a lot, like there's like 10,000 combinations of modes that you can be in at any given time. And, uh, yeah, that would take someone who has read the owner's manual and stuff, <laughs> you know, to figure out. Um, but otherwise, my impressions from the passenger seat, like we did some kind of wacky stuff a yeah, couple of times. Very you know, stable car. And it takes it so well, yeah. so well. And it gets around the dunes fine on just dirt tires. Yeah, I think you're going to like this power mode way better. Okay. So yeah, I did bottom out across that. It's just your classic hump in the middle of a of a dune and it hit hard slam right into the spine hard yeah. so well i'll drive it again later after everybody else is done i think you're up dude yeah your turn matt it's yeah, your I wanna, time i want to take her out yeah do it all right my turn for the driver's seat in this sucker i think we got her figured out a little bit all right so flip this over so we can see everything drive mode sport plus yeah makes sense suspension sport plus yeah Okay, so like, clicking into gear, there's that little H there. When we got in it, it was in low. So that's low. 
Now that's high. And then you I get... wonder why I didn't hear the anti-lag more. Right. So that makes sense. So now you get the anti-lag. So weird. anti-lag tune thing going on. <laughs> hey, listen to this. Anti-lag, listen to the surge when you turn it off. Wow, yeah. sounds like a freaking semi, dude. That's pretty cool. All right. <laughs> what do you boys think? <laughs> Very exciting moment for Matt. I think he was probably looking forward to this the most. Okay. Yeah, I was, like, I almost couldn't sleep last night because I was just thinking about it all night. I woke up way earlier than anybody else. True. And I have mixed feelings about it. I love, like the transmission works really well. Yeah, I agree. However, there's certain times we came across a situation where there was a sharp carve that we were trying to do. And I went to just like give it some, you know, pin it and spin around this sharp carve. Mm -hmm. And there's just nothing there. What I would have done in my X3, I would have just whomp, like that, but this thing just whoop, it didn't really, it didn't do exactly what I wanted it to do. But in most situations, like it shifts like super smooth and seamless, you can't really tell. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. That rip around there, so I had it in Sport Plus with the anti-lag on the whole time. And then that little rip around there, I wanted to try Sport without the anti-lag, and it's definitely like when you're on and off the throttle, it takes a minute for it to build up boost when you don't have the anti-lag going. Hmm, okay. Now, people might ask, why don't you just leave? What the hell is that? <sighs> that thing was crazy. People might ask, why don't you just leave the anti-lag on all the time? Sport Plus, just keep it there all the time. Well, it sucks down the fuel a lot quicker with the anti-lag Sport Plus mode. Cause you're sitting at um, what, two, three pounds of boost, something like that? Yeah, two or three pounds. Even like when you're sitting here at a stop, it's at 2,300 RPM. Mm -hmm. It's just a trade-off, I guess, if you want the super response. You're gonna go through fuel pretty quick. I think this thing had a full tank when we got it, and it's almost down to half. Whoa, okay, interesting. So, Did you notice the difference between high and low, Doug? Yeah, huge difference in high, for sure. Huge difference, it definitely applies the power a lot better. I can feel that it's pulling much better than it was when I drove it, so. The thing that I love about this is it's so stable. Yeah. It feels like we'll never roll over. I shouldn't say that, but. <laughs> That's it, how you like, guarantee a rollover. Those are brave like, words. Like my car, if I let off the gas and I'm trying to just turn on a flat in these dunes, it feels like it wants to do this. Mm -hmm. This thing feels like it just. I think that's the um, geometry of that rear end. Like it's got so, so and, many different pivot points. And I'm not fighting the steering wheel at all. Yeah. Like well, there's no leverage over it like anymore. Like that suspension works super well for that. That's a huge improvement over yeah, the next three. One thing I did notice too is getting back in my Pro R. My Pro R is definitely smoother. Okay, I could be a tire thing, mm -hmm. but the steering wheel is chopping compared to this steering wheel. This thing, I felt nothing. Yeah. There really is not much for feedback. So. And the car's so quiet too. Like, yeah, it is pretty quiet. You know, you used to get clutch noise and stuff. There's none of that with this. It's just turbo noises. How's the braking power? I know they upgraded the calipers in this one. Is it a four? Is it a four? The three piston three up front, piston. two in the back. So when I first hit the brakes on my drive, it felt like there was almost nothing there, like hmm. no bite or anything. So I think the brakes just need to break in. They seem to get a little bit more bite as I went. Hmm. So 
I don't know how much you guys were on the brakes, but. Not at all. I the, noticed they weren't really grabbing very hard either. They weren't grabbing hard. The pedal is not good. The brake pedal is soft. Hmm. That was always a problem with X3s. Don't so, know why. It won't, it's still got the same problem. <laughs> yep. So, I don't Look. know why brake feel isn't on their list of improvements, but anyway. There's a little jump right there. When you guys want to send this sucker? Yeah. Well, a lot of you guys were talking about tires hitting the knuckle, and yep. Turns out tires are hitting the knuckle. Yeah, there's wow. not much clearance. On the other side. Yep, also hitting this one. It's hitting it pretty good. No wear on the tire yet, that's good, but man. Yeah. It's not just, a, not just a one side thing. I think if you push on the tire hard enough, it would hit the knuckle right now. Oh yeah, you're there, bud. Interesting. And that was what, three, four dug pounds? Probably like two and a half. Not Nothing. that much. Well, your turn, Mike. You ready? All right, let's do it. You ready, buddy? Yes, sir. I think they're still in the safety zone too. They got a lot yeah, more to go. I think there's more. Come on now, boys. Oh, <laughs> 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 well, it's freaking two cylinder Sport Plus mode. Sounds nuts. <laughs> I don't pretend to know how it works. Think they use the third cylinder to do something? I don't know. I think the middle cylinder shuts off. How was that, boys? <laughs> well done. Well done. Oh, that was a good time, buddy. That's a little bit different experience driving it. So the car takes big stuff really well. I'll yeah. give it that all day. Not a fan down low. I personally don't like the transmission. I hmm. know you guys like it. It does work well. I'll give it that. But I'm not a big fan of the, how the transmission is. That's just me. I like CVT stuff, but personal opinion. It jumps really well. And yeah, it takes, very good. Like, none of that got even close to bottoming. I'm, I'm in Sport Plus, too, so that probably helped. Like, the car jumps super well. Like, you guys have to try it. Okay, good. Um, the power feels decent on it. It feels like it might be a little restricted. Like, maybe, you know. Yeah, there's some tuning stuff some built tuning in. that could be done, but overall, it's a very big improvement from an X3. I like it. I do like the machine. Like I said, I have opinions here and there, the back and forth, but I do like the machine. What do you think, Ryan, coming from a Pro R? Well, uh, not driving it, riding in it, it really is plush. Like when we was jumping, I don't know how high we was getting, but it felt like we was getting up there, and it just landed. So that reminded me of the Pro R. Yep. You know, uh, but was you on the floor? I was on the floor, probably about 50 feet out from the jump. Okay, but like when we first took off and you cut up that. <laughs> yeah. Was uh, you on the floor? Uh, on the hill I was, yeah. That was on the floor. Okay. I did stuff the front end immediately over here. I oh, it was right there. It. We saw it. That was great. It didn't bottom, though. Oh, so interesting. It, yeah. went, it was in Sport well, Plus again, so. Well, that's the thing. I thought it would be more. I, you know, as everybody was saying, you know, 240, and it just rips. Well, coming from the Pro R, I mean, the Pro R does as good, if not better. Yeah. At, at pulling-wise, yeah. you know. Yeah, you're always in the right gear on a CVT. Yeah. I, I am a fan of the anti-leg. The anti-leg does work. It has very good throttle response. So. Okay, cool. You know. yeah. But overall, it's a really yeah. nice machine for sure. I don't, you know, not don't insanely love it, but I don't also hate it. So, I mean, that's that's a good thing. You know, it's a, it's a good car. All right, Doug said, get out of here, I got to drive this thing. Yeah, I need to go for another rip in the correct gear, in the correct settings, uh, have all the fun stuff be by myself so I don't have to worry about hurting anybody so we can... Just hurt yourself. Go a little fast. Don't actually hurt yourself. That's all you have to but worry about. I, it's an acceptable risk with just me. So True. 
Yeah, we're gonna give her round two here. Give it, bud. Such a wild sound, too. You hear it. That is so weird sounding. It is a very cool car to actually watch ripping around, though. Yeah, it does look cool. bud it's a good machine like being in the right settings in high getting the anti-lag going all makes a all makes a big difference it's uh you know for me it just doesn't match my driving style yeah I, for me it's not that fun of a machine to drive because it it's heavy it's a momentum driver it's yeah. a high speed thing it doesn't have that you know snappiness bouncing through the woods corner to corner like it's it's too big it's too heavy it's just not for that so it's badass the suspension <laughs> yeah. is really good the transmission's cool it's just not it's not for me there's nothing really to complain about yeah with it i think the suspension works great it's super stable mm -hmm. there's good power there you know it doesn't feel crazy because it's a heavy machine but the transmission works well it does cool things so my big thing is when i first drove the pro r we were mind blown. All of us were mind blown. Yeah. Like, I don't know if we've become numb to good things, which is totally possible. But when it comes to this, I didn't feel any of that blow awayness. Yeah, it's good. It's not. It's not game changing. Cool car. I like the car. <laughs> cool I <still> car. Love it. <laughs> Matt, do you still get? You still want to buy one? I think I do. So I, I think it matches my driving style more than it does Doug's. Yeah. Because yeah. I I'm usually not the type that's like on and off the throttle all the time mm -hmm. it's more i am more of a moment of momentum driver so yeah i have mixed feelings about it i think for me the pros outweigh the cons okay so i just want to make a sweet recovery rig out of it so yeah a lot of bed space <laughs> in this sucker yeah yep mm -hmm. well doug i guess the uh, age-old question you started life side-by-side -side life in a yellow maverick are you going to continue life in a yellow maverick i thought at the beginning of this day the answer to that might be yes but i'll be honest with you no i don't think so i think i'm gonna let matt be the guy in the maverick car i mean this isn't going anywhere this is not matt's matt's getting another one mm -hmm. i assume it's still the case so what's <laughs> yeah. gonna happen we'll with see. this i don't know but i'm not claiming it for myself what about you you gonna be a bad hell no <laughs> no i mean i really like my my mav it's awesome mm -hmm. right this one you lose all the agility that you get with the standard x3 yeah. you lose the punchiness that you get with the cvt you add in a bunch of weight and then i'm completely starting fresh with a stock car and i've really got mine where i like it right makes yeah. sense so makes it's sense. a tough thing i think the belt guys that blow belts they're gonna love this thing mm -hmm. Yep. If, you're, if you haven't driven a side-by-side -side before, you're going to love this thing. Mm -hmm. If you've driven the big dogs, it's, you know, it's punching about equal to those. So, Mike, what do you think? Are you going to be a Maverick Arsman? It's been a real hard decision, but I don't know, man. Like, might have to creep over to that dark side unless this thing really starts coming around a little more. Yeah, so. we can all drive it more we'll and see, see what the trails a, are like. I guess lot. Nick Seuss just got himself a Maverick Arsman. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't uh, think about that, yeah. That's yeah. what happens when you don't show up, dude. <laughs> Last one to get picked. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Uh, awesome machine. Obviously, we're going to continue to do stuff with this. We'll mod it out. We're going to keep ripping it. Uh, yeah, what do you want us to do? Yeah. Comment that. Like, What would you like to see done with this? Mud build, drag build, recovery build. Matt's already doing that. Tough break. Already spoken for. What else could we do, though? Yeah, toss some ideas out there. Let us know what you want to see, and maybe we'll do it. Because uh, we're not going to get rid of it. So, thank you, guys.
for being with us for part one of this series. Whatever it turns into, I have no idea, but probably get it out in the trails and rip it. Yep, Definitely good idea. curious to see what it feels like out in the trails soon. Get some mods too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it needs an exhaust, needs a tune. Yeah, stat, yeah. stat. That Excellent. might make me feel better about it. Okay. Just start modifying it. Yeah. Yeah. Right off the bat, right mm -hmm. off the bat. But yeah, seriously, thank you guys for everything you do that allows us to be Oh, actually, we outroed this video already. Did we? We yep. did. Yeah. All right. This isn't, we this did, isn't the end. We're going to the walk around. Now we're going to something else that we did earlier. All right, just cut to that then. All right, cut to walk around. Well, you've made it to this part of the video. Matt, you're a big Maverick guy. Mm hmm Yep. What you've seen before this, I don't know what happens to it, but right now she's super fresh. Sweet. And uh, there's a lot of little things to kind of cover that's different from an X3. Um, a lot of little details no one talks about, so let's just get into it. We all know, hmm. super wacky, super wacky, but it makes sense because it puts the pivot point of the steering right in the center of the tire, which is where you want it. Instead of having the tire cantilevered out, right in the center, no bump steer, hopefully, we'll see. Huge tie rods, Yes. huge steering rack that looks goofy. I don't really understand how it works. You can tell that these have a next generation of smart shocks because they have two wires going to them, one up here, one at the bottom. The previous ones just had one at the bottom. So there's gotta be a much wider range of adjustability with them now. Dual fans on the radiator, nice. super cooling, but that's not all. There's a secondary radiator in the back with dual fans and a humongous aluminum uh, intercooler with dual fans. Like, okay, what? Set up for cooling. Why is there two radiators? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know that what the engineering is. Enough, like, you just two. If Stick one, I guess, head. if one gets clogged with mud, you got another one. That's half the size. Got it. So, silicone charge tubes from the factory. Yeah, that like, thing looks like something you'd see from Evo. The good stuff is like this stuff. I mean, it makes my hand look tiny. This stuff is huge. Very big. Huge stuff. And, uh, but, oh, and I also like that the tow link is adjustable in the rear now. Oh, that's from nice, the yeah. factory. So on if, both ends. If you get a little weird and like maybe a little bend in this or something, or just over time it gets out of alignment in the rear, stock rods, you can adjust the toe. I don't know how that's gonna hold up. The little ball joint. Wait, what? Going into the nut hole. Instead of a through bolt, now it's a ball joint. So the sway bar is basically on the outside now, which is kind of like the Maverick Sport. But what's interesting is, so they come with the link mounts in the bed That's from good. the factory. I feel like no one was buying this stuff on the X3s. Right, because so it like, was kind of a pain to put these in. Yeah. So what's cool is this bed is a lot more usable. You got oh, tie down points in here. Nice. You got these side pockets with the lid sold separately, <laughs> which is kind of funny. How are you going to separately sell the lid? I don't know. That's, That's like buy this jar of mayonnaise, but there's no lid on it. That's can am for you. Also, this bed floor comes out seemingly pretty easily. Oh, interesting. Which is good, but if you look underneath it, it doesn't really give you access to anything. Okay, so, so this this isn't the top and bottom, this is something else? Well, no, there's just, all you can access is like, just the rear. Know, like the if you had to service or, your heat shields. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but know. honestly, there's a ton of room in here. Like, you can work on anything, basically, from the side or the, either one, you know? Yeah, turning that motor sideways really makes mm -hmm. things a little more accessible. Like, you have the charge tube right there, again, silicone. Yeah. I like the worm gear clamps, those clamp very well. You can actually get in there and change your plugs over moving the intercooler, it looks like. So oh yeah, interesting, they're just right there. Yep, super easy. Yep. So back to the doors here. Right, so if you guys are used to an X3, the fuel door is kind of a pain to deal with, but this one just swings right out. Oh, it doesn't have that bad hinge. Right, and it's huge. I mean, yeah, that's, <laughs> and what's interesting too, there's one on this side too. What? I wish it had a filler cap there too, but I think Why it's would for they maybe when they do the... right hand drive. Maybe they do right hand drive ones. It's I don't think or, they do. It's that or the mirrors I'm thinking, because they have aftermarket or uh, accessory mirrors that you put on this. Remember that bolt on, they do the wiring through there. Huh. Hmm. Hard to say. Look at how the cage mounts. It just goes very through. weird. The doors are weird too. Like yeah. if you think that door is big. Outside door handle? Like they've really stepped yeah, these up. I like the molded panel a lot. Mm -hmm. Then it's got a nice little spot for it to sit in, so you're sealed away from dust and stuff. I'm a little bummed that they kept the same seats out of an X3. They're not bad seats. Yeah. But 
just kind of was hoping for, I mean, the seats are a big deal. You know, it's the main thing that you touch in the car. It would have been nice to see a little upgrade or something for this. Yeah, it looks but, like they uh, upgraded the steering wheel a bit. It's kind of got that same grippy over mold. Yeah, steering wheel, super nice. You got a nice wide brake pedal now, which I personally enjoy. Oh, that thing's huge. Mm -hmm. Wow, okay, man, this floor is wacky shaped too. So sitting in the passenger side, I sat in it for the first time and I was like, huh, why am I so uncomfortable? Well, right where your Achilles tendon is, there's a cup holder. Achilles cup holder. Can you see that? Yeah, and I can see that. Sort of, your ankle just sort of rests on that. I guess I could move the seat forward, but hmm. I feel like some people might really bump their legs into it. Could be. Could <laughs> what be. is good for 23 too is that they really stepped up the amount of storage you yeah. get. As if it could get any smaller. Like, you can't. <laughs> I guess you've got a big fuel tank, so I don't know. Maybe well, that is makes there up for storage it. here? There is, and a whole bunch of power ports. You got USB, you got 12 volt, there's more. USBs. Oh, that's cool. Okay. That one's that's probably nice. for connecting your phone to the radio. Yeah, I like the idea of having a phone pocket too. Everyone's got a phone. Yeah. It seems like that's a phone pocket right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, that's and weird. then you got that door. You no longer have to get into the center console to wire up accessories. Oh. You got your posts and stuff oh, all nice. up okay. in here. Is that a bus bar too? Stuff wires in here, no bus bar that well, I see. That's not a bus bar. Oh, no, it's not. No. Just dead pockets. But you huh. can put in that like smart accessory module they're selling. Okay. And the, you can plug and play Can-Am accessories. So that's kind of cool. So no more CVT in this dog. You got a DCT, seven speed. So this is all electronic. There's no, no cable, no physical connection to the transmission at all. So you just bump it into drive, bump it into reverse pushing a button for park is a little weird to get used to. Hmm. Uh, neutral, you better not let your battery die because then you probably won't be able to get it into neutral without some sort of physical, I don't know what you do. Gotta read the owner's manual, I guess. Low and high, you can shift on the fly. Yeah, that's which interesting. Which is really cool. So if you're going in low and say you're going like 30 miles an hour in low and it's in seventh gear, if you just put it back into drive while you're moving, It'll select the right gear for high range and just keep on going. Man, one of the nice features is look at the size of that freaking air box. That's a big air filter. That's a big air filter. You should pop it open. Yeah, we should probably just go ahead and see what like, that's like. I really love that they finally have made everything really easy just to get to. Like simplicity, you know, changing stuff out, doing maintenance on it. Oh, oh, same air same filter. Same air wow. filter, same part number. The turbo is encapsulated in so many heat shields, you yeah. wouldn't even know it's there. It's so tough to see. Huh. This is all symmetrical, so it doesn't matter which way. Oh, that's cool. Put it. What do we got there, bud? Yeah, so this here is an electronic wastegate for the first time on any side by side, which is really cool because now, for you guys that are like tuning your machines and turning up the boost and all that stuff, you used to have to check crack pressure with a gauge and everything and adjust it. Now it's all computer controlled, so whoever's tuning the machine can just run whatever boost they want and it's infinitely controllable. Like, it's really cool technology to see yeah, in a side-by-side. -side. Most modern cars have that, yep. anyway. Yep, like EcoBoost Fords and Hondas and all that stuff. It's proven technology, so. And I feel like they've uh, added so many things here, and the biggest thing is a 16-inch rim. Yeah, I just don't weird. really understand that. It doesn't need a 16. No. And you're stuck with a rim with basically zero tire selection. Not that the ITPs are bad. Big fan of those tires. Right, right. Just had to adjust a five lug. Now we have to adjust the six lug. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Dang it. So many lug nuts. It's a sweet looking wheel though. Yeah. A lot of people were talking about the clearance up front, which is obvious. The clearance in the back is probably more critical. Yeah. Yeah. For paddles like hitting this. Yeah. I don't know if you'd be able to run your 1650s or something on this where the paddles stick past the It just has to be carcass. so far out. Yeah. Offset rim or run a space around the stock rim, something like that. Yeah, this thing is already 77 inches wide, which is massive. It doesn't look that big, but right. it's only because the car is so damn big. It hides it well here. It does hide it well. It's like Mike, he actually weighs 700 pounds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, by the time someone gets paddles on this thing that, you know, our equivalent size for the power, you're gonna be pushing that 82 inch mark, easy. Huge car, huge car. So more on this front suspension. 
Mike, you noticed something pretty interesting. Yeah, so basically on X3s, you know, the sway bar used to be back here and the link just went down to the arm. Yep. Well, now they've completely just completely 180 it to the front. So apparently they must be finding a way that the sway bar must work better in the front or help the car better that way. Or... It almost looks just like a clearance situation. <laughs> yeah, and it's There's honestly, so many things up it's there. not a very big uh, sway bar. So I'm thinking right. these things must do way more than the, we're wondering because that, uh, yeah, for the body roll. So you guys know at this point, uh, if you don't, I've had an X3 since 2017. I've also had this nasal thing for about three days. So anyway, <laughs> uh, okay, seat is raised up, so that's interesting. Okay, that's new. Oh yeah. That's new, that's cool, telescoping. That's pretty sweet. I like too how it's not like predetermined spots where it's locked, like, you know, a notchy old car, like you can put it anywhere. Infinitely adjustable. It feels like an X3. It feels definitely tall. Now is this the same adjuster? It is. Oh it's my the whole gosh. bracket and everything is the same for the seats. Yeah, the seat adjuster on your X3, you guys know if you've been in anywhere uh, off of the pavement, once it gets dirty one time, it's just kind of trash. That's surprising, but. Yeah, I'm a little disappointed that there's, there wasn't any improvement made there with the yeah. seats and the adjusting. Yeah. What's good about that though, is I think this car will take well the aftermarket seats. The Polaris doesn't really do good with that. They build the height of the seat pretty much into the seat mm -hmm. so if you get an aftermarket seat with more cushioning you really can't slam it down any lower so man there is a lot of real estate up on that dash holy crap yeah <laughs> that's what uh doug and i were noticing like i like can't tell here yeah, yeah it's a little over an acre, an acre. Yeah. i can't tell where the front of the machine is from sitting in it, it yeah it's just insanity yeah let's see if there's like a you know, like it's a tov a hard, here it's hard to see but Doug's actually a mile away right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and things like the strap pull too, you know, mm -hmm. I get it. It's saving a little bit of weight, but ultimately like, stop messing around, put a door handle on it. <laughs> yes, yeah, seriously. You know how many people don't know what the hell that is? Yeah. The cage design looks basically the same mm -hmm. kind of uh, adaptation of what's on the X3, very similar build style humongous gusset right here so that's yep. cool to see and this is a different radius i think from an x3 cage yeah the radius is huge mm -hmm. like it doesn't really stop radiusing and much like <laughs> the x3 too the c pillar is fake on this it's just basically a bed support i don't mind that a lot of people will harp on it but the strength in your cage is all right here controlled by this b pillar the c pillar is really more of like a race car thing mm -hmm. all the x3s that i've ever had even with aftermarket cages don't have any support on the c pillar and i've rolled the hell out of them with no problems so stock cage and uh, aftermarket so do they not connect big deal. they don't connect on these no it's, it's anything just, it's just off into the uh, space dude they do make it so you can put an aftermarket cage on it i'm not really sure how manufacturers are going to fix basically yeah, the misalignment this, on the front yeah that's that's weird. Pretty weird. Well, we've already ripped it at this point, uh, and hopefully we didn't crash it. Hopefully it still looks this good. But yeah, we paid a good amount of money for this. Thanks to Ajax Motorsports for uh, bringing this out to us. Good guys over there. Yeah. So we would have already ripped it at this point, but let's go rip it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> come on. Let's, let's quit talking. I don't know how to make that transition either. But thanks for watching about uh, whatever we're about to go film. Yeah. Still confusing, but no, seriously, thank you guys. Uh, obviously, these machines are getting crazier and crazier, and you know we want to get the best stuff so we can show it to you, and it's super expensive. And uh, we couldn't get this stuff without all your support. So if you're helping us out by watching these videos, subscribing, donating on Patreon, buying those parts, buying that merchandise, buying through the Rocky Mountain Link, uh, thank you guys so much. If we haven't already wrecked this machine uh we'll continue to rip it hard and give you honest thoughts about how it's doing so see you back here a couple days love you bye mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. love you see you